Okay, let's get started then. Um, hi everyone, my name is Yuan Tang. I'm uh, a principal software engineer at Red Hat, working on our hybrid cloud AI platform. And uh, I am Eduardo Arango, and I'm a senior engineer at NVIDIA. Okay, uh, more introduction about myself. I'm on the leadership team for multiple open source projects, including Argo, Kubeflow, and uh, also a chair of working group serving uh, under the Kubernetes community. And I also work a lot on the machine learning frameworks like Xubus and TensorFlow from my older days. And I did publish a book, uh, Distributed Machine Learning Patterns, if you guys want to check it out as well. And find me on social media. That's my handle over there. So yeah. And uh, myself, so uh, I've been working in making containers and cloud-native technologies uh, better for HPC and for eight years now, nine years now. So basically, that's my, my curriculum there, uh, but I just want to go over it very fast. Uh, currently, I work as a co-chair of the working group serving, and I actively participate in projects like uh, Working Group Bash, and also uh, I'm trying to help with the DRA initiatives. OK. so. But how did the working group got started? So that's uh, a question we got a lot. And it's basically a, a quick history of KubeCon, right? Like, is the whole success of KubeCon? So during uh, Paris KubeCon, uh, sadly is not here, uh, Clayton Coleman uh, had a quick conversation with Joan before the on-conference sessions. And then at the on-conference session, we all as a community were uh, already having the idea of, OK, we need a, a common place to talk about inference and serving for Kubernetes. How do we make this better together? Because uh, at Paris KubeCon, we saw a lot of talks of people trying to propose different ways of solving the same challenges. And although that's good for a conference, moving forward, being disconnected is not good for a community. So everything started at Paris KubeCon, and I'm happy to say that now at the next KubeCon, we are already presenting uh, projects that this working group is leading, uh, even things that we have managed to lead and get into Kubernetes, and it's been only six months. So it's been a, an exciting time for this working group, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, exciting. Like One thing to add is uh, Clayton and I also discussed at KubeCon Europe. We talked a lot about some of the solved challenges and pain points from ecosystem, pro ecosystem projects like KSER, right? Whether we can bring some of those advancements to the low-level Kubernetes APIs, whether those are the things we can benefit the wider communities. So working group serving is like the best place to host those vendor-neutral uh, uh, advancements. The second question we get asked a lot is, why is not called working group inference? Why is it called working group serving? And it basically goes down to we uh, are serving inference models that are already pre-trained, right? So when, when you, you mentioned the word inference, it's basically that you are getting a, a pre-trained model and you are inferencing based on a prompt to get a, an output, but you are not serving that model, right? So working group serving goes deeper than just the inference word. We are going over how can we scale out a model? How can we run a model in a Kubernetes cluster in production? How can we get metrics? How can we get alerts? How can we, we get production grade inference? And that is actually serving. So it's a, one of like the top questions that we get here and, and in other meetings. So we wanted to let it uh, settle here at this talk. Yeah, and it's not just for AI and um, machine learning workloads. Like, hopefully, some of the benefits we bring to the community can also benefit uh, traditional workloads like databases and uh, other like, uh, web services and so on. So another question we get is uh, working groups, working groups, working groups. So working groups all the way, right? So uh, at KubeCon Paris, for AI-related topics, uh, the community was at the Kubernetes Working Group Bash, the CNCF Bash Working Group, and the CNCF AI Working Group, right? But uh, the main difference between CNCF Working Groups and Kubernetes Working Groups is that at CNCF Working Groups, you get to talk about things that are not even related to Kubernetes, right? It's cloud overall. 
we can talk about Apache Spark there or Apache Airflow, and it's still related to, to AI and Bash. So at, at Paris, we had the idea of we needed two more working groups to help define what we need for Kubernetes, not, not CNCF, but Kubernetes specifically, about working group serving and working group device management. So these two groups were born out of uh, KubeCon Paris, where we were talking about all the gaps that Kubernetes has towards inference and serving uh, AI models. And this is why we create these groups. And the main difference, the key difference between serving and bash working group, because people also ask the same, like, is bash also for, for the same? Like, you are also running distributed workloads in bash. Is it, can, you can do inference with Q, which people like, get confused. So no, batch working group is going to be focused on training and on distributed workloads and batch workloads. And serving working group is going to focus on things like that we will be presenting today, that LLM gateway, uh, DRA, multi-host inference, and we will kind of like hand off like all the batch related topics to the working group batch. Yeah, so the working group um, survey is currently led by four different companies, Google Cloud, Red Hat, NVIDIA, and ByteDance. But we have more than just uh, those leading companies. We have many participating organizations. We have grown the community to be over 250 community members. So the community is growing really fast. There's a lot of interest in this space. And we invite all of you to participate as well and contribute your ideas. So why is this working group important? So we have, as is defined in the GitHub uh, web page that you can find, we have three main goals for the working group, right? That hopefully in two or three years down the road, we will be able to close the working group saying that these goals have been reached and we will then have the need to create another working group with a crazier uh, purpose, right? But our goals right now are to enhance Kubernetes workload controllers, meaning we need a better way to control when we deploy LLM models in Kubernetes with projects like KServe, uh, auto scaling with projects like Keda, and, and we need to get this better because right now there are a lot of challenges. So part of the conversation during the working group meetings is talking with the community, as Juan pointed, that we have 250 participants in the working group meetings, and we need to find all the gaps when you are deploying these LLM models and try to fix them so we as a community benefit from that. The second uh, goal that we have is investigate orchestration for scalability. And, and the word investigate is there because uh, as Juan will be presented uh, later on, we right now have an initiative that is called the benchmarking uh, project and it's because we are investigating uh, how these LLM models behave in a Kubernetes cluster. What do we need to monitor? What do we need to see if it is running okay or not, right? Like right now we're kind of like running blind and mostly because every model is different. Some models, if you track the GPU utilization that you are kind of like getting the picture, but some models are, is more like the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, the network bandwidth. So it's like depending on the model, the use case, what you need to track to be able to have good scalable uh, production ready systems and, and good auto scaling uh, is still kind of like being defined and that's something that we are chatting on the working group meetings like weekly we discuss about uh, a, a member of the community will join and say like hey for my model if I track this specific metric everything is, is okay so we are taking note and we want everyone to participate because as it's there investigate we're investigating what do we need to know about running LLM models and uh, the last, but not least, is optimized resource sharing. And uh, since Paris and before Paris, uh, KubeCon, the, the fancy word has been DRA. So this optimization of resources goes back to DRA. Uh, the working group has a direct communication with the working group device management because we want to make sure that we also leverage DRA for things like multi-node operations and also uh, the better utilization of GPUs. So how is the working group operated? Oh. Oops. Right. 
Yeah, so we divide and conquer into different work streams. So the first work stream I'm going to talk about is the orchestration work stream. So what we are doing uh, within that work stream is to identify challenges within uh, those ecosystem projects like KSERV and Ray. So we make sure like, we understand the challenges and obstructions needed uh, for orchestrating uh, large serving workloads. Uh, understand like some of the pain points and use cases from these ecosystem projects. And some relevant sub-projects that we are working on, I'll talk about, about them in more detail, uh, are serving catalog and RM instance gateway. The second work stream is the multi-node, multi-host uh, work stream. Uh, so we are, what we are trying to do is to extract patterns and um, and common practices for uh, running uh, multi-host, multi-node uh, inference workloads. So we talk about different implementations and different ways to achieve cost uh, effectiveness and different ways to optimize capacity and, uh, and so on. So we are also seeing a lot of increased uh, demand for serving large models on multiple nodes. Uh, so larger models don't fit on a single node and we have to partition and uh, serve them in a multi-node fashion. Um, so leader work set is one of the example uh, project uh, we are working on. Uh, so it provides some common multi-node deployment, deployment patterns uh, for, um, for models that are sharded across multiple nodes. And we are also working with ecosystem projects like KSERV to add support for multi-node as well. Um, so the, the multi-node support for KSERV, uh, the PR for that uh, feature was just got merged, merged uh, last week. So if you are one of the adventurous users, uh, feel free to try it out. Uh, it's not part of any of the releases yet, but we do wanna hear about uh, some early feedback from end users so that we can continue improving uh, going forward. Uh, the third work stream is the auto-scaling work stream, and uh, here is very related to what I was talking about investigating. So, I'll, like a big chunk of the conversation that I'm having around auto-scaling are metrics, right? We want to know the best metrics to track for auto-scaling, and we want to be able to work with KSERF and KEDA to build an, a, a proper production-ready auto-scaling solution, but still we want to uh, find out the right metrics to track. So that's why we are running uh, these benchmark projects and we are going to the community to ask, okay, what are you tracking when you are out scaling? But it's, it's not just the metrics, right? Another big topic for out scaling is these models, as Juan just mentioned, they are getting bigger and bigger. And then it's not just creating more nodes and adding nodes to your cluster, but it's how do you move the model that is heavy enough now, right? like hundreds of gigabytes, to the newly created nodes. So are, you going, are we going to do network attached volumes? Are we going to do image caching? Uh, like, where are we going with this? So uh, the auto scaling working group, we are working in, in initiatives like the OCI volume source that is a topic that years ago, as I was telling Juan, was called data containers or data images. And it's basically a container that is not a, a, a file system on its own, but it's basically just data and also uh, the model service metrics, so we need to standardize these concepts. And the last work, uh, work stream of the working group is the DRA, right? And the whole idea of this work stream is to keep a direct communication with the working group that, uh, device management. So it's not like the working group serving is directly working on DRA, but we are collecting use cases and feedback for DRA and potentially box, and then we are communicating them to the working group device management. Uh, luckily, we have people like uh, John and Sergey that participate in both working groups, so we have that, that bridge between the both working groups, and we help it to push for beta from the working group serving, right? So it's kind of like our responsibility to go and help the other working group to push initiatives and, and proposals. And right now we are working with the DRA working group device management to work in multi-host serving and partitioned device support. So we hope to have these features in by uh, 1.34 or 1.33 or 1.34. So that's kind of like the responsibility of this work stream. 
Okay, next I'll talk about some of the current initiatives from this working group. So the first one is the LRM Instance Gateway. Uh, so it's currently an Envoy-based tooling to support more, uh, more like production-ready uh, and uh, efficient way of serving multiple use cases um, uh, across a shared pool of uh, hardware accelerators. Uh, those use cases and all LoRa adapters are running on the same foundation model. So we want to make sure the way to share resources is optimal and efficient. And the, um, and the routing to those uh, uh, LoRa adapters uh, can be like maximized, uh, especially the throughput. And we want, we want to also ensure that there's fairness share, uh, across those different uh, LRM uh, services uh, with distinct priorities and latency objectives. And we also want to provide, make sure like the com configuration for uh, various uh, LoRa adapters and rolling out new adapters can be easy uh, to end users and uh, to allow gradual um, safer rollout for new adapters. So this is an architecture diagram for the LRM instance gateway. And on the left-hand side, you can see an example spec for the LRM in service. Uh, basically, you can specify the pool of resources and the target models that uh, with different weights uh, for those uh, different use cases. Uh, and we are using extra plug from Envoy to receive and route the traffic uh, to different, uh, pool, uh, different pool of um, LoRa adapters and resources. And based on the metrics we've been collecting from, uh, for example, cache sites, uh, to determine a, a more intelligent routing uh, to those uh, LoRa adapters. So another initiative that we're running, as you can see here, is following through DRA-specific features. And uh, you will find the list. So uh, things that were merged in 1.32, and you will then find it now uh, available for you, the structural parameters, faster scheduling, the removal of the classic DRA, right? So now it's. Uh, that it went to beta, it kind of like dropped a lot of the things that were proposed on, a, on the Alpha API, and uh, significant process and autoscaling integration. So on the on the chair of the slide that you will find in the SCED platform, you can just click over this, and you will get redirected to each specific cap that was merged for 1.32. And here as, as well, uh, we are getting uh, NVIDIA DRA uh, driver ready for GPUs. We have the example uh, driver for DRA, if you want to build your, your own DRA driver for your own specific needs. Uh, Google, uh, the TPU driver is in process that I think it's, it will be ready for next KubeCon, uh, the CNI DRA driver. So all of these initiatives are in progress. And we, from the working group serving, are tracking them to see how can we help them, how can we help uh, get the, the caps pushed forward so they get included in the next uh, Kubernetes release. Uh, miss it, but on track for the next release are also uh, a couple of caps that we are helping to review and also push forward so they get in, included in the next Kubernetes release. And as I said, there are many more to come, right? Like, uh, at the working group serving and also the working group device management, there are a lot of talk pieces being discussed on what can we add to DRA so we make it better and we can run more complex workloads. The, the other topic, as I was mentioning before, is uh, something that I don't know if I'm old enough or uh, everyone here is old as me, but uh, I think at DockerCon or KubeCon, like 2018 or 19, people were already talking about data containers. Right? Like that was kind of like a, a topic that people were mentioning, and now it's becoming relevant. And it's becoming relevant for model caching. These models are so big that we need to find ways to move them around our Kubernetes clusters, and we found out that leveraging on what we already have with the image spec, that is the layers, we could move data around with these layers, right? And, and Docker, Podman, Cryo, all of them already know how to pull and push layers. And when we have a big container, uh, our runtimes already know how to do also parallel pulling. So we want to leverage all of these features that we already have in container runtimes and move uh, LLM models around and that's uh, the OCI artifact initiative that we are running. 
Um, I just want to quickly mention that Kaser also supports our model car feature, which also streamlines the process to pull models directly from OCI uh, image registry, and which could enable, enable more efficient auto scaling. Uh, so that's currently a hacky solution, but we do plan to um, uh, make sure the transition to OCI volume source is smooth. So as long as you are using model car now, I think there will be a very simple toggle to turn on the experimental feature for OCI volume source as well. Next one is you. Next, I want to talk about the serving catalog. <clears throat> so this is one of the project the serving group, uh, serving working group is uh, working on. So we want to make sure we have a place to uh, provide working examples for different popular model servers like VRM, uh, or open models like Llama, uh, Mistral, and so on. And also provide examples for different deployment patterns like single host or multi-host uh, inference. And we also want to make sure like, people can find all those different primitives and orchestration frameworks uh, within the same catalog as well. As part of uh, the exercise of building this catalog, we are also exploring the uh, common configurations and patterns for inference workloads so that we can understand uh, uh, what are the things we need to abstract going forward, and whether or we can provide some really uh, common parameters uh, so that the community can base on uh, uh, and tweak from there. And um, we are also like, supporting multiple runtimes, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we currently support VLM and Jetstream and several different models, but more model servers and model support are coming up uh, soon. And there are also contributions on auto scaling for HPA configurations as well. And we are also adding uh, additional templates for multi host inference uh, to this catalog. Uh, the next initiative is the benchmarking tool we recently just get started working on. Uh, we, so the current state is like multi different companies have the different tools to benchmark their large language performance. Uh, either for different model server runtimes or different models, or different use cases. Are you use, using LoRa or not? Like everything are uh, very specific to internal use cases. So um, we sit together with different uh, communities and companies who are building these similar benchmarking tools. We um, gathered like uh, the use cases and requirements together. So what we are working on now is a. Um, a uh, more standardized uh, benchmarking tool that can be used as a library uh, that's, uh, that support multiple different uh, model, ser model servers and it's uh, hardware agnostic and simple deploy, uh, especially on Kubernetes. Um, so we can use, it, use this standardized uh, benchmarking tool to solve different uh, benchmarking needs like auto scaling or LoRa use cases, uh, especially with the uh, instance uh, benchmarking the instance gateway uh, using this uh, new tool that we are coming up. So I, um, I won't get into the details here, but uh, we have a proposal coming up, which we'll be sharing with the community soon. So you, we invite everybody to join the community meeting if you'd like to hear more details about this new project. Um, I'd also like to talk about some of the involvement with the ecosystem project. Uh, one thing I have in mind is the case of project. So we are uh, working on, as you might have heard, we are working on the AI Gateway project uh, in KSERV. Uh, that's uh, like a collaborative effort between Bloomberg and Envoy uh, communities. And uh, we want to make sure like, we are uh, uh, aligned with the LM instance gateway as well. So going forward, we'll try to figure out a, a way to work together and integrate well with each other. And we're also contributing to the serving catalog to make sure we provide enough examples to the uh, communities, uh, the case of examples. Uh, to the community so that uh, the community members can explore those uh, patterns and uh, uh, starting point, can use those as a starting point for their production ready uh, serving workloads. And we'd also like to leverage the benchmarking tool we are working on and 
uh, as part of this um, collaboration with the working group serving, we did identify some of the gaps, as you can see from the right hand side, uh, there's a table of differences between uh, the, uh, the blueprint proposal that was shared with the working group serving community and CASER. We identified the missing parts in CASER and we take active actions um, to implement and try to fill that gap. For example, the multi-host feature that we recently added to CASER is one of the big um, uh, request, uh, uh, frequently requested uh, feature from the community. Um, so we, uh, we also published our roadmap uh, in KSERV in case you want to know more about uh, what we are working on and planning to work on. Uh, not every uh, task uh, items are already assigned yet. So if you are interested in contributing, uh, join one of the KSERV meeting, community meetings and we'll figure out how to get you started contributing. And we do have a lot of talks uh, at KubeCon. This is just a list of example talks we, um, we uh, already had, <laughs> given this is Friday. <laughs> uh, a lot of the talks were given, uh, I think all of them, I guess. Yeah, but it's, uh, this talk will also be recorded, so in case yeah. you miss it, one of these, <clears throat> just look up these names in YouTube and you can watch the recording. Case yeah. case. So make sure, like, if you're interested in KSERV, there are p uh, specific talks related to that. There's also a, a very popular panel from the KSERV community that showcases how we collaborate with each other, like, with the communities and industry partners. And there are uh, uh, also like co-outs uh, in different sessions as well. Um, yeah, how do we get involved? Um, you can find the charter information under Kubernetes community repo. Um, we have Slack channel on Kubernetes uh, Slack works, uh, workspace. And uh, feel free to reach out to one of the co-chairs and sub-project leads. And some of uh, them are also attending the talk, so I see a few over there. So feel free to stick around and hang out with us after the session. A special thanks to Ray, who couldn't make it and help us with the slides as well. So, uh, yeah. Sergey, also a, a working group mm -hmm. uh, chair is here. Mm -hmm. And Ashok is also there working on the benchmarking and metric standardization. Yeah. 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 Thank you everyone uh, for, for helping us. It's, this, it was Juan and myself, but this is a, a joint effort as we are pointing in names, but uh, a coupon only allows two at the stage. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everyone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have time for some Q&A? Do we have time for one or two questions? Yeah, we, we do have time, so. Any questions? There's a mic in the uh, center if you are. Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm Alex, and I'm actually really happy that I came here, so it's perfectly uh, big now to lead to in terms of work. Um, so one thing I saw is there was, of course. Excuse me, do you mind speaking yeah, closely? There was this big announcement okay. about uh, SMG Glue, like the AI gateway from Solo like coming in. And then of course, KSERF has the inference gateway. Is there like any connection between these two right now or this is gonna be figured out over time? There, yeah, there are some overlap and we are trying to make sure like we leverage whatever uh, effort is already there so to avoid any duplicating effort. So yeah, as I mentioned in one of my slides, we are, we'll be working more closely together uh, between the two, uh, between working group and uh, KSERF community. So, We'll try to figure um, out a uh, plan forward as well. If you have any uh, specific feedback, uh, feel free to join our meetings, and we, uh, we are very open to suggestions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, preparing for this talk, I was also discussing with Joanne that uh, part of the working group effort is to avoid uh, duplication so we can focus in, in single ideas and work together as a community. So, this is kind of like part of our job, right? Like, see if there is someone out there proposing something, and we are already working on that idea, so we just invite them to the working group. Mm -hmm. Great talk, thank you. Uh, I guess I'm curious about, with fractions now, and Carpenter doing things like bin packing, is there any connection between these things? I mean, putting 
workloads across nodes that have got a lot of GPUs on them. Um, any thought to bin hacking? So that would be into the working group and the work stream orchestration, right? Yeah. Uh, Where does Carpenter fit into all of this, I guess? That's the work group cluster, isn't it? Yeah, if you have any... Scaling. Yeah, I don't have anything on top of my mind, but if you have uh, okay. specific questions, feel free to join our course, and we can discuss with the community, so... Yeah, I mean, I can imagine a whole bunch of inference servers that are, I mean, this is the IBM use case they were talking about as well. You know, a whole bunch of inference servers that are smaller than a single node and you want to bin pack them. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's part of it, right? I mean, you can create a fraction of impact on that. So uh, let me do a quick survey. Who, uh, uh, who's not in working group serving yet? Who hasn't got involved yet? OK. Good. Good to know. Yeah, so we invite you all to join, like, to share anything, uh, specific, specific questions and use cases. It's an uh, it's open community, so yeah. Thank you, everyone. No more questions.